my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and in the last video we looked at the basics of the fitting screen and kind of what all these numbers mean etc etc. Today we're going to look at the things that go in the fits, the modules. We're not going to be looking at what the modules do or how you build a fit for this that or the other. This part of the video is particularly for maybe you newer players who aren't familiar with how the modules relate to each other and the variations on modules and how to get information about modules, etc, etc. So that's what we're here to look at today. Now, each module, of course, has its own information screen. We'll have a look at one of those. We're just going to move it over here out of the way and the variations of tabs along the top. Description, obviously, very basic description of what the module is going to do. Note that on this micro warp drive, it is actually telling you that there is a penalty to your max capacitor. There's going to be a reduction just for having the micro warp drive fitted. These description screens will tell you of the penalty for just having the module fitted. It won't highlight the penalty that you're going to get when the module is running. That information will get in the attributes. There's a note here that this module usually goes on frigates and destroyers. That is referring to the 5 mega newton micro warp drive. On the 50 mega newton version it will say cruisers and battle cruisers although it's not impossible to put an oversized prop mod on a frigate but that's a story for another day next tab is the attributes which as i mentioned is going to go into the detail of everything so here you can see it's going to cost us 38.25 joules to activate it we're losing 20 percent of our maximum capacitor capacity the velocity bonus is 606 percent which is very good and we're getting a 450% signature radius modifier, which is a penalty to how easily your ship can be locked and targeted just while the micro warp drive is running. Down here, we've got some details of how quickly it will be damaged if you overheat the module, and here the bonus you will get for overheating the module. So you'll get a 50% thrust bonus for overheating, but it will damage the module. Once overheated modules are down to 0% of their hit points, they will switch off and they will need repairing before they can be used again. The module runs for 10 seconds in a cycle, so that's how quickly it's gonna go through the cap. That's where the cycle time can be relevant. The quicker something cycles, the more it's gonna be activating. So the more cap it's gonna eat in a minute, say. So cycles that have a longer activation time or skills, etc., that give you a bonus to the activation duration of a module will actually be reducing your capacitor use, but again, that's a detail we'll look into more next time. Down here we've got the tech level, which is telling us this is a tech one module. Obviously the tech two micro warp drive will be tech two. They also refer to how hard they are to build in industry, but we'll talk about that when we get to that tab. And the meta level we've got down here runs from zero upwards, and we will look at that when we're comparing modules in a little while. The fitting tab will tell you it needs to go into a medium slot and how much CPU and power grid it is going to re be required to fit on your ship. Requirements is your skill, the requirements, they're the skills you need to fit a micro warp drive. Every type of 5 mega newton micro warp drive is listed on this screen. And using the compare button here, we can get some more details on that. We'll look at that in a little while. And of course, if there's something you know you just want to buy and you're in an appropriate place, you can just click on the view market details. Just do bear in mind, you're only going to get the market details up for the region you are in. Industry tab here, in this case, it's only showing us what we'd get material-wise for reprocessing this module. If we go to uh, some other kind of module here, we'll go to the scan range finding array. It tells you here, if you use this blueprint, you can make one. If you right click and show info on the blueprint, then it will go into the details of what you need. You can just click back here on the info screen, this button, you see where my cursor is to go back to where you were before. So that's what you need to build one, the blueprint. The blueprint will then tell you the materials you need. Reprocess materials is what you're going to get if you reprocess it, or you just simply crush it. And this is what this module is used for construction wise. You're in effect going to need one of the Tech 1 modules to convert using the Tech 2 blueprint into a Tech 2 module. So that's what the tabs on the info screen mean, and that's what they show you. All pretty self-evident, so let's start getting into some detail, shall we? So what we're going to do first, we're just going to have a quick look at a selection of modules I've put here in this container. And as you will see, they've got various names. The target painters are a good example. We've got enduring, we've got compact, and we've got scoped. We've got restrained here on this module, 
and then we've got these warp core stabilizers with all kinds of names that don't really relate to much at all and then we've got three types of blaster so what do all these little names mean first of all very simply enduring means it's going to use less capacitor compact means it is going to use less power grid and or cpu to fit on your ship scoped means it has a longer range restrained is used on modules that have a downside in the case of this one right here the restrained shield flux coil is going to boost your shield recharge rate by 25 percent but cuts your shield hit points by 10 percent and if we were to look at one of the other variations say the compact one you'll see that that one is going to cut your shield hit points by 15 percent so restrained is reducing a downside on the module which will vary We've got a restrained micro warp drive here. The attribute here that is restrained is the signature radius modifier, which here on the restrained one is limited to 450%. It does bloom your signature radius a lot when you've got a micro warp drive running and it does make you easier to hit. But we'll talk about that when we're looking at propulsion as a little subsection. So that's the basics. The other thing to just bear in mind is that Tech 2, when you're heading for Tech 2 modules, they're always going to be the hardest to fit in terms of power grid and or CPU. So do bear that in mind. You might need to adjust your fit or learn some secondary skills to use Tech 2 modules effectively. Now down here, we've got these two warp core stabilizers. And they've got all kinds of different names, none of which really relate to how they relate to each other. And then we've got three blasters here, the electron blaster, the ion blaster and the neutron blaster. So how can we quickly see how these compare to each other? So if we open the info screen and open up the variations. We get all the variations of that module here. And if we click compare, we are going to get some stats. Now, when you first come on this screen, it will show you every attribute that applies to those modules. All we really want to see is the variations. So we want to click this box here, show only attributes that differ. So there we are, the differences are CPU usage, the scan resolution modifier, targeting range modifier, activation time. And now we've got these columns here. So if you want to get the warp core stabilizer with the least CPU, you can click on all these columns to sort them. Of the non-faction ones, the Halcyon is going to be the easiest to fit on your ship. It's also best in that it's going to have the least damaging effect on your scan resolution and the least damaging effect on your targeting range. Although, to be honest, when you're trying to run away, targeting other ships is never a priority. The 12 second cycle time, as you see, is shared amongst most of the modules, apart from Warp Core Stabilizer 1. Now, you also see that Warp Core Stabilizer 1, although it has quite poor figures, it is by no means the best module. In fact, it is the worst module it is more expensive than many of these variants. I've added an extra column in here, which is the meta level. That is basically not necessarily better, a higher number, but different, but certainly level zero, the warp core stabilizer one, is the worst module. You'll also notice it is not the cheapest module. This is often the case. Do not use these meta zero modules, the one that just says uh, electron blaster one or shield extender one. They are the worst modules. They quite often are more expensive than the better modules simply because their value is in them being bought up for people to turn into tech two modules. A lot of early fits you'll see in the game, whether in the community fits or online, will feature these meta zero modules. And the easiest way of upgrading those fits is usually to fit some of these kind of mid tier modules here, depending on your needs. But you'll always get better performance out of them than you do out of that meta zero version so that's something to bear in mind particularly if you're miners mining lasers mining laser one is usually more expensive and less efficient than the two other variants that you can get so do have a look at that and just as a bit of information those meta level zero modules so the warp core stabilizer one and warp core stabilizer two they're the only two modules built by players in game all of the other variants come from loot drops from rats that's another reason sometimes that the variants are cheaper than the base module is because the likes of me get lots of weird little modules and bits and pieces dropped by rats when we're out playing the game. And we don't worry too much about getting the best money for them. We simply dump them onto the market. So that helps keep the prices down as well. So yeah, anything but the Meta Zero, uh, the tech, you know, that basic tech one version and the tech two version, they're coming from the rats. So that is something that does restrict supply a little bit. 
in some instances. Not only can you get the information up here for the modules that you are looking at and its variants, and, and if you get a lot of clutter, and on some modules you will, there are many, many, say, faction variants, these screens also show you how little extra you get for all of that money when you buy faction modules. You can just highlight these, right click, remove, just get down, reduce the clutter, get what you want on that screen. Another method of comparing modules, again, particularly for you new players or whenever you're venturing into the territory of a new type of weapon, is what do, all, what do these mean? What is the difference between an electron, an ion and a neutron blaster? Laser weapons have names that just seem like word salad to me. So what we can do, we can just select all of these with the mouse and we can compare these. And that will put those three weapons into the fitting screen. And again, I've already got the only show the stats that are different. So we can click all of these and this will give us a very good quick look at what the difference between these weapon systems are which very basically is the case that Electron Blasters are way easier to fit on your ship, half the CPU usage of a Neutron Blaster, but the Ion Blaster and then the Neutron Blaster are going to have increasingly longer ranges, as we can see here, and increasingly better damage modifiers. They're also heavier on your power grid, as well as the CPU, so do bear that in mind. I quite often, particularly with the Alphas, run my destroyers with Ion Blasters rather than Neutron Blasters. I'm losing a little bit of pew performance, but the fit as a whole is much more sound. So that's how you can compare weapons of completely different types. And then of course, if we open the info screen on the Electron Blaster, we've got all these variants. We can compare those. This hasn't overwritten what we had before. We've still got the Neutron and the Ion Blaster on there, but we're gonna remove those. So these are all the Electron Blasters. So what do you want to know? Which one's going to be easiest to fit on my ship? It's going to be the modal. Which if we put the meta level on just to see you is the metal level 4. You usually find meta level 4, which is the one before Tech 2, is going to be the best module. It's going to be the most expensive module. If you're on a little bit more of a budget, I would usually recommend meta level 3 modules as a good balance between performance and expense. But it varies greatly from module to module. Compact medium shield extenders, for example, are very expensive because a lot of people want them. It's high demand because the compact versions will fit much easier onto a small hold ship, like a Merlin or a Cormorant, for example. To generalize, the higher a module's meta level, the better the performance you're getting out of it. But again, the harder potentially it is gonna to be to fit. Now these all use the same power grid because they're all electron blasters. That's why we have no column for that. And there's a little bit of variation on the CPU usage. But there's all the stats there. Now, if you wanted to make yourself a little kind of a crib sheet, so you can uh, read some of this and look at some of this outside of the game, you can certainly do that. So what we can do to get this into a more usable format is simply, we're gonna click up there and then we're gonna shift click down here. We've highlighted the whole row. If you right click, there's no sort of copy or cut option here. But while they're all highlighted, you're gonna press Control C for copy. We're gonna go into a spreadsheet where is he? Here he is. And we're going to just paste all of that data straight into that spreadsheet. And obviously you can make this for yourself. It's something, it's just a suggestion. It's a functionality that's in the game. When you have a screen, and it could be this screen here, in fact, if we just put it into list mode, then we can do exactly the same thing here if we want to. Copy that, control C, remember, you can't do it with the mouse. And then we could just paste that info straight in there. So into a chat, into wherever you want. There you go. That's how you can cut and paste information. One of the most practical applications of that is probably into Eve Prazel. If you cut and paste all of this stuff into Eve Prazel, it will give you a quote for all of it. Save a lot of mucking about. But this is the compare screen. It is a very invaluable tool. I suggest that it's a good way for you to have a little look through modules just to get your head around how they relate to each other and what the variants can do. And another quick way you can use the comparison screen, if we open up the fitting screen, so we're looking at modules, and say we're looking at mid-slot modules, and we're a little bit tight for fitting. Now, as I showed you in the fitting screen, we could, of course, put on the filter. It will only show us the modules that will fit. So let's say we're not sure if we can fit a target painter on or a status weather fire. So we're just gonna to go to variations there. 
compare. Uh, what we'll do, we'll take off all of those, get them out of the way, remove those, and then while we've got the comparison screen here, we can open up the weather fire and literally just drag it into that comparison screen. So if we just look at, say it's CPU, a little bit short on, you can see target painter, the compact target painter is going to take four less CPU than a compact weather. So that's another way you can just drag anything you want. Once you've got this comparison screen open, you can just drag any modules you want in just to get a uh, look, see at how they compare. It doesn't have to be the same kind of module at all. So that's the comparison screen. And I think it doesn't get mentioned much in the game or talked about, but it's a very useful tool, especially early on in your EVE career when there's just so much for you to get your head round. And rather than going from info tab to open this one to see his attributes and then, oh, I don't want all oh, the compact one does that. But, oh, let's have a look at the enduring one. Oh, let's do that and go back, go back. Here's that root tab. You can cut all that out. Comparison screen, sort it, use it, abuse it. I didn't know it was there for quite a long time myself. And I'm very glad that one day I realized just how useful that tool was. Anyway, my friends, this video, I think we're going to leave it right there. Apart from, of course, we do have a skin giveaway. That magnificent Vedmax skin, which you can see above right now. I'm going to give a couple of these skins away for this video so leave a comment down below with your in-game name in it if you're a new player let me know if you found this useful if you're a new player let me know i don't know whatever you like let me know what your plan is your goal is in the game if you're a more experienced player did you find this useful do you use the comparison screen as much as you could to be on over time you get a real sense and a feeling for a lot of this you might not know the details of the modules but you'll have a rough idea in your head as you go along i want that one i want that one It'll all become much more easy, but this video, I hope, just helps you get that little introduction so you can start figuring things out for yourself, which is definitely the best way to get to grips with Eve, is to be given the information so that you can find it yourself rather than just being spoon-fed. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, my friends. Take care of yourselves. The next set of videos are all ready made. They will complement these ones. It's basically looking how it's basically looking at how to use modules, rigs, implants, and skills to reduce the amount of power grid and CPU, etc., that modules need, or perhaps give you more in your fit. So we'll go through each part of the fitting screen and we'll look at what what is good for capacitor, what's good for CPU and power grid. Those three are probably the first three. Then we'll look at targeting, navigation and drones. And then when it gets to the subject of offense and defense, they take a little bit more detail, but we will be getting there very soon. So take care for now, my friends. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch. Remember to click that notification bell if you want to know when the next video is coming out. I finally got ahead of the game with the videos and I intend to stay there. But for now, my friends, fly brave, enjoy your eve. If you're new to the game, don't rush. You've got all the time in the world. But for now, my friends, goodbye.